Hi, John. How are you? Pierce Morgan, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Pleasure. Nice to talk to you. All right, so we are talking about Serial, serial Killer with Pierce Morgan. I, I, I've seen a little bit of the show. First of all, were you scared doing a show like this? Uh, I was apprehensive. I mean, you're dealing with very, very dangerous people. And I think that in both of the uh, examples of these first two shows, they are particularly dangerous men. And, you know, when you're with people sitting two feet away from you who, in one case, have strangled maybe 25, 30 people with his own hands to death, then, of course, you're going to be apprehensive. How many people, how many serial killers did you talk to? And, and did, you, did you see a common theme? Did they have something in common? Well, each of these first two uh, shows is one killer per show. We tell their whole story, and I go into the prison where they're currently residing, and I sit down and interview them for over an hour. Uh, and the common theme between these two is probably quite common, I think, to many serial killers. It's all about control for them. Uh, they tend to be quite smart, uh, quick-witted people who can evade capture sometimes for uh, two decades. So you're talking about people who are intelligent, but they have a, a twisted valve inside them, which makes them get off on killing people. And uh, that makes them, I guess, from a criminology point of view, very fascinating subjects to talk to, because you're really left with, well, how did this happen? Why did this happen? Why are you like this? Was there uh, a moment that was very bizarre that stood out? What was the craziest moment when you're, when you're having these conversations? Well, I think part of the, uh, the challenge is they don't have to stay in the, in the room. They can leave at any moment. And in fact, in both these shows, the subjects, the serial killers, tried to walk out several times. And you're playing a kind of game of cat and mouse with them, a bit like a detective, if you were investigating the original crimes, where you want them to try and open up. You want to unlock them. You want to unpick all the lies and deceit because they've had years to hone their lies. And I saw it as very much like, like being a detective. And um, to me, the really interesting part for a viewer is you, you kind of go on a journey with me as I uh, lock these guys down until eventually you can see them just snap. And in both cases, they end up walking out in fury. And by then, I think the viewer will have concluded the same thing as me. You have a reputation of not uh, being afraid to say what's on your mind. Do you think that's why they chose you to be in the show because you're not going to... If you hear some BS, you're not going to just sit there and listen to it. You're going to call it out. Well, I think so many of these crime docs don't actually have an interview with the killers. And I think what's interesting here is that we got this remarkable access to actually put me in the room with them. And anyone who knows me from, you know, whether it was CNN or America's Got Talent or even Celebrity Apprentice will know I don't really suffer fools let alone serial killers. So I feel like um, when you watch it, you can at least be, I think, quite comfortable that I'm going to go after these guys eventually and they're going to be made accountable for what they did. Yeah, definitely. And this is, this is a compliment, what I'm about to say, but one thing about you that I've noticed politically is you're very hard to nail down. You definitely have your, your own thoughts. Uh, when you were here in the US on CNN, there was a lot of gun control debate and you were on the left side of that. But now Trump is uh, president and you've taken Trump's side on a lot of things. Uh, is that because, you, because you're, you're friends with Trump, you agree with a lot, some of the things he's doing, but not some of the other things? W why that uh, unique perspective? Well, I think we're living in a very echo chamber age where people take one side or the other, and whatever side they're on, whether it's Trump in America or Brexit here in, in Britain, for example, is that people just don't want to hear another view or accept there's anything good about the other side. The truth about Trump, I've known him for 12 years, he's a friend of mine, but the truth about him is I wouldn't vote for him, he's not my politics, I'm not a Republican. I don't like to categorise myself as anything politically, but certainly in American terms I would certainly lean more liberal than not. But I wrote 36 columns about Trump for DailyMail.com last year, the American website for Daily Mail newspaper, and 18 of them were critical and 18 of them were supportive. And that's pretty much how I feel about Trump. I think some of the things he's doing are very good, like his work in North Korea, uh, like his work with jobs and the economy, and other things like, you know, separating kids from their parents on the border, uh, I think is obscene. So I, I challenge Trump when I don't agree with him, and I, I agree with him when I agree with him. To me, that's what a democracy is about. It's not about just staying in your own bubble and screaming that everything that somebody else does or says 
is horrendous because it usually isn't. And it also diminishes the outrage if you do that. The separating kids from their mother thing is the one issue that I don't get because it seems like it's been happening and all of a sudden now there's a selective outrage because people don't like Trump. Well, I mean, it was happening yeah, under Obama, so why I'm now not. is this a huge yeah. issue? Well, Barack Obama deported over three million people and many families were separated in that process, but it wasn't government policy to prosecute everyone who came over the border and if they then jailed them to automatically separate them under federal law from their children. And that's what's changed. And of course, Trump realized, I think, almost immediately this was a step too far because you had these poor kids who were, you know, clearly in some kind of trauma. As a father of four, I found it unconscionable. So I was very glad to see him roll it back very quickly, but it should never have been allowed to happen. So you're talking about the zero tolerance policy? Yeah, because that was the difference between previous administrations and the Trump administration. By doing zero tolerance, you are basically arresting and prosecuting everyone you catch coming over the border illegally. And then under federal law, if they get jailed, automatically they're separated from their children. So by having a zero tolerance policy, every parent who tried to come over with a child would be prosecuted and then separated. That to me is a, an obscene policy. And that was the difference between this administration and previous ones. And it does sound like Trump does agree with you because as you mentioned, he signed that executive order to hopefully change that. We'll see where that goes. Last question for you, what, what is the difference? You've worked obviously uh, in Britain and the United States and media extensively. What's the difference between the two, between the two um, media uh, cultures? I think they're pretty similar in many ways. You know, we're both free democratic societies with a vibrant and aggressive press. And I think that the media in both countries, generally speaking, are very admirable, certainly compared to countries like North Korea, China or Russia. So we should be proud of the fact that we have a free press, an aggressive press who holds power to account. Um, but I, you know, I've worked in America and Britain for many, many years. And I, my experience of the media in both countries has been pretty similar. I think that they are both got very good reason, I think, to be proud of the vast majority of the journalists who work in the media in America and Britain. But there are also, as Trump likes to say, elements of fake news. People who publish stories they know are wrong, badly sourced, sloppy journalism, that happens here too. Uh, I think that you know, he's right to call them out when they're wrong. He's wrong to call whole networks fake news. All right. Well, Pierce Morgan, thank you so much for being with us. Twin Cities, make sure you check out Serial Killer with Pierce Morgan. It's on Oxygen Monday, Mondays at 6 p.m. Thank you.